The cardiovascular system delivers oxygenated blood to tissues and removes waste products. The heart, controlled by the autonomic nervous system, pumps blood to all organs and tissues of the body. Arteries and veins, the vascular as part ng vascular system, carries blood throughout the body and keep the heart filled with blood and maintain blood pressure. Paano pag mayroong MIR, myocardial infarction? At ano ibig sabihin ng MIR, myocardial infarction? Myo means muscles in the heart and infarctions means injury or death of tissues in the heart resulting from inadequate blood supply, especially as a result of obstructions of local circulation by thrombos, impulus, lipids, or plaques, causing for the narrowing of the artery in the coronary system. What's up, Maka Burks? Your nurse on duty is here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Stay with me. This is a Tagalog English discussions on myocardial infarction. So let's so let's continue what is MI. So meron tayong tinatawag na three eyes of MI. Uh, ischemia, injury, and infarction. Ischemia is caused by the decrease oxygen supply. So pag may decrease ng oxygen supply, uh, may, kakaunti kasi yung blood na nagtatravel or nakakapasok dun sa area ng uh, coronary system. So patients may complain chest pain on and off, chest pain during the activity. Pag nag-progress yung chest pain, possible na siya na nagkakosa ng injury because of insufficient blood supply or oxygen supply. So, pag in mo yung patient, meron siyang ST elevations or depressed. At pag ang symptoms naman nagkakaroon na ng infarction or death of the tissues or progress yung injury ng heart muscle, meron na siyang depressed Q segment sa ECG. So, madali lang pong tandaan. Pag injury, is the segment elevated or depressed? Infarctions or necrosis, depressed Q segment. That is MI. What are the, sim what are the symptoms of myocardial infarction? Chest pain. Often, it is being described in the center or left side of the heart and lasts for more than a few minutes. Um, then he describes that there is sharp, dull pressure, a big tentative, heaviness, or squeezing. It is usually associated with symptoms of rotating of pain into shoulders, in my arms, upper abdomen, or jaw. Same with the manifestation of shortness of breath. Another term is dyspnea or difficulty on breathing. Kasi nga, yung heart will not be able to supply the necessary oxygen and nutrients. Lungs is trying to compensate. Another one is the nausea and vomiting. Sa chest pain kasi, kinocorrelate nila yung uh, manifestations ng heartburn. Yung feeling of burning sensation sa central chest or upper central abdomen. Yung heartburn is usually due to regurgitation ng uh, gastric acids which focus more on the gastric reflux. So sweating naman, it is the manifestations of our integumentary system because of insufficient oxygen supply again and nutrients. So cold sweating indicates of decreased oxygen supply into the peripheral system or in the integumentary system. Another manifestation is light headiness or dizziness. This is typically unpleasant sensation. Uh, minsan, dinidescribe siya as parang vertigo or feeling that one may faint and oxygen demand and oxygen supply is insufficient. So, meaning to say, pag tumagal pa siya ng ilang minute, may lead to loss of consciousness. Remember, oxygen is very important in the brain. It may lead to coma pag hindi siya uh, nagkaroon ng sufficient oxygen supply into the brain. A regular heartbeat of Ang term natin dyan is arrhythmias. It's either tachy or increased cardia, which means heart, increased cardiac rate, or bradycardia or decreased cardiac rate. Or there could be an alteration in the ST segments or PQRST in the ECG. Normally, we can assess the irregular heartbeat through taking the pulse, through auscultation. 
And the feeling of tired is also a manifestation of insufficient oxygen supply. Napaka-importante ng oxygen supply ng ating katawan. So, once there is a problem in the heart, in particular, the oxygen demand by our tissue, it is very fatal to our system. So, what are the risk factors? Let's compare the men and women risk in myocardial infarction based on research younger women. During premenopausal states with, with below 45 years old have a better outcome than in men with the same age. Scientists believe this is because of the presence of estrogen sa babae. So this estrogen has heart protective effect. However, pag nagmenopause ng isang babae, the protective benefits ng estrogen decline and the women are more at risk than men. Yung high blood pressure or hypertension is already discussed this in one of my videos. You can check and you will learn more on the pulse pressure. So I will not discuss this more further. So yung presence ng uh, hyperlipidemia, yung mga tao na nakakailang pak ng cigarettes, na may content ng nicotine that may produce viscosity in the blood that may lead to thrombus formation, is one of the predisposing factor kasi siya ng hypertension at yung a uh, chronic pathologic disorder ng pwede sa heart or sa CAD. Obesity. Obesity is one of the medical condition in which yung excess body fat to accumulate to an extent that may help a negative effect on health. Remember, ang isang obese, pag nagpa-x-ray siya, uh, makikita doon na meron siyang cardiomegaly or mas malaki yung heart niya sa normal na size niya. Because the heart is trying to compensate based on the demand of the nutrients and oxygen, which is more than the normal body mass index ng isang obese. So, at least din yung um, unhealthy diet, eating unhealthy diet, too much alcohol, and more sodium and fats in the diet. And of course, the number one reasons for cut or coronary arterial disease is hyperlipidemia, hyperlipoproteinuria, and um, presence of or elevated LDL in the blood or the blood cholesterol. Genetic problem is also one of the reasons that is inherited, like example, yung LDL receptor mutation na tinatawag na hyperfamilial hypercholesterolemia. Na kahit maingat siya sa pagkain, pag naglapapalaboratory siya, manapakataas ng kanyang um, lipids or fats sa circulation or sa blood. So, it is more on the genetic issues. So, these are the common um, risk factors that you can find for the patients with MI. Diagnostic test. So, sa blood work, meron tayong uh, CKMB, myoglobinuria, and troponin INT. These are enzymes and proteins coming from the myocardial tissues. Tumataas lang ito or makikita lang to sa laboratory test pag may indicator or it is an indicator that there is a damages in the myocardial tissues. So, let's focus more on the troponin. Ang troponin kasi, tinatawag siyang complex of three regulatory proteins, troponin C, I, and T. Uh, usually, it is integral to the muscle contractions in skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. So, ang measurement ng cardiac specific troponin I and T are used as diagnostic and prognostic indicators in the management ng MI at ng acute coronary syndromes. Yung blood troponin levels may be used as diagnostic marker kasi ang tawag sa kanya or biomarkers ang tinatawag. Uh, it's simply because ang troponin INT is earlier siyang nadidetect few days before pa talaga mag complain ng uh, MI yung patient or chest pain na prolong not only presence ng ischemia but more on manifestation ng uh, myocardial infarction. So, elevated na yung troponin INT. At same way, kahit pa yung patient is on the recovery period na wala na siyang chest pain but in the lab test or lab work, lumalabas pa rin na elevated yung troponin INT, it indicates that the patient is having silent MI. Elevated yung 
bad cholesterol, yung LDL. And WBC is elevated also. It indicates of inflammatory process when there is already damage sa tissues ng myocardium. ABG is an important lab works. It provides us if sufficient by yung oxyhemoglobin in the circulation or it does reach in the peripheral system. Next is the non-invasive and very common electrocardiogram or ECG. Uh, this is the type of lab test that is being prescribed sa mga patients na nagko-complain ng, ng chest pain. It is a graph of voltage versus dielectrical activity kasi ng heart. Uh, using is this electrode na linalagay sa skin natin. This electrode, dinidetect niya yung small electrical changes that are consequence ng cardiac muscle depolarization followed by repolarization. So, itong depolarization and repolarization, when you do the auscultation ng heart, that is the lab in dub, and that is the relaxation and contractions of the heart, which is an equivalent of cardiac cycle or one heartbeat. Yung ECG pattern, uh, pwedeng magbako in a numerous cardiac abnormalities like cardiac disturbance. Example niyan yung atrial fibrillation. Pag atrial fibrillation, ibig sabihin ang abnormalities na sa upper portion ng two chambers ng heart. Pag sinabi naman na ventricular tachycardia sample, ibig sabihin ventricles is two chambers below the heart. Pag tachycardia, it means fast in contraction ng ventricles. Pwedeng nagbabago yung waves ng ECG pag mayroong inadequate coronary blood flow like myocardial ischemia or angina pectoris or myocardial infarction. At pag ang patient nagkaroon ng electrolyte disturbance or imbalances. The heart computed tomography CT scan and heart MRI. This is the fastest way in order to assess the condition ng heart and identify the locations of the occlusion or the pathologic causes ng tissue damage. And the last one is coronary catheterization. It involves uh, using a catheter into the chamber or vessels ng heart uh, to check in the arteries for coronary artery disease and myocardial infarctions or heart attack. So it is being conducted by the cardiologist it's either through the angiocardiography or visualization ng veins pag arteriocardiography, visualizations of the artery with the help of regiocontrast agent and illuminations with x-ray. Uh, it is done for both diagnostic and interventional purposes. So maybe another video will be discussed for this type of diagnostic test. Treatment of MI, I made a mnemonic on COPD tab, which is incorporate some of the collaborative management, uh, more on the assessment, the nursing intervention, laboratory test, invasive and non-invasive, and also the medication that is being prescribed. Letter C stands for cardiac monitoring. So ECG is very important to assess for dysrhythmias and indications for um, tests that Results that may provide us or tell us that there is a progressing MI. And also, we need to be aware and consistent in checking for some electrolyte imbalances which manifest on the ECG result. Because some of the medications may affect the normal balance like uh, providing um, or giving uh, medications like diuretics. Another one is the vital signs, which is very essential, heart rate. We can check the normal, based on the normal range, if there is a bradycardia or tachycardia. It is the same with the compensatory mechanism. It will depend on the conditions of the heart. It will depend on the activity of the patient and on the type of medication that is being given. So, it will help us to provide an information on the circulations and the conditions of the heart of the patient. Respiratory rate, usually, um, since it is connected into the heart uh, through the process of diffusions, gas exchange, 
So if there's something wrong with the heart, also the lungs is affected. So sa respiratory rate, we need to check for tachypnea or bradypnea. And the skin of color of the patients is very important for us to know if it is a compensatory mechanism of increasing of respiratory rate or uh, there is a presence of bradypnea. Uh, once na mayroon siyang cyanosis and nag increase yung kanyang respiratory rate, it is because of the stimulus that is being provided by the CNS to increase the respiratory rate because of increase of demand of oxygen. But since yung heart is having a problem to provide the sufficient cardiac output to send all the necessary oxygen and nutrients into the circulation, so there is a problem. Same with the pulse rate. In the pulse rate, uh, we just need to, if there is an ECG or monitoring attached, it is important to check the pulse rate. Um, if it is bounding or if it is ready, it will provide us an information that the cardiac output is sufficient or insufficient. Blood pressures is providing us a picture that the pulse pressure of the patient, if it is wide or not, and if the circulation is reaching into the peripheral system, supply of the oxygen coming from the left ventricle. So it would depend or it will be based on the activity of the patient. The vital signs may manifest in particular your heart rate based on the activity of the patient. That is why in the first 72 hours or as long as that the patient is having chest pain or some of the enzyme of the heart like troponin is still elevated, the patient is still in complete bed rest. They need to minimize the activity so that there could be a decrease of cardiac rate and oxygen demand. Letter C is comfort and activity. So it is very important that we need to listen. Babawasan natin yung activity ng patient. Complete bed rest siya with commode privilege for 24 to 48 hours or more depende sa presence of ng chest pain ng patient. Why complete bed rest? Uh, simply because it needs more rest at least less yung activity ng patient para less din yung uh, cardiac rate or oxygen demand because of the certain activity para malesen or mabawasan yung uh, possible ng ischemia or chest pain. Packet with commod uh, uh, privilege. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng pumunta ng CR yung patient. Complete bed rest siya. And usually, the doctor providing with stool softener Bakit po? Because of the presence of the vagal nerve that connected into the heart. Usually, these are the reason of uh, bakit mataas yung rate ng mga patients na nag-MI na namamatay sa CR. Because yung pag um, hindi nagbibigay ng stool softener at nahihirapan, nag, nagpupush yung patient, the more it may lead to vasoconstriction sa heart, leading for that vagal nerve connected into the heart nagkukosya ng arrest or ng MI. Yun yun, ang reason nun. Another one is uh, pain reliever. It is very important yung pain reliever. Paano nga naman nagkakaroon ng comfort yung patients kung alam niya na there is an impending dome because of chest pain. So usually, they provide um, the nitrolid norf, ang tawag po, which is nitro, which means nitroglycerin, which is also a vasodilator. Uh, di ba ginagamit natin ito for angina pictoris? And if it is not being relieved by nitroglycerin, it means it is not um, angina pictoris, but it is an MI or myocardial infarction. Lidocaine also, but the drug of choice for MI is morphine sulfate for uh, pain reliever. So, once matanggal yung pain, of course, yung anxiety or yung stress ng patient, uh, maglilesen yung vasoconstriction sa mga arteries. So, 
psychological support is very important and gradual activity is very important. It would depend on the conditions of the patient and as per recommendations of the doctor. Usually, nag increase ang activity, example, sitting at the bedside, dangling, uh, usually in the fourth to fifth week yung ambulation. And also, uh, it is very important na not too hot or not too cold yung kinakain ng patient. Pero pag nasa ICU pa siya, uh, NPO siya, naka no per orem ang patient. Pero pag nagsisimula na nasa recovery period siya, no, not too hot or avoid too hot or too cold na meals. And also even pag mal maliligo yung patient, ano, not too hot yung dapat na uh, water niya. Letter O, oxygenation and tissue perfusion. First, skin color. We need to check yung skin color. May tatlong skin color. Pinkish. Pag pinkish, ibig sabihin nun, good ang perfusion, sufficient yung red blood cells, okay ang oxygen, oxygen reaching into the peripheral system. Pag pale naman, common ito nakikita natin sa mga patients na may anemia or yung grabe ang bleeding. And the last one is cyanotic or desky color. Uh, this is very common sa mga patients na may COPD, example yung bronchitis, um, yung lips and kanyang nails are cyanotic and you can also see these symptoms to patients na may MI. But how you can differentiate between COPD patient or patients with bronchitis and patients with MI? Sa MI kasi, split seconds lang. Uh, the dusky color or cyanotic will appear pag nag-stop na mag-pump yung heart. Next is the urine output. Why urine output? We're talking about circulatory assessment. If there's good uh, stroke volume or cardiac output coming from the left ventricle, reaching into the peripheral system, organs, tissues, and cells, mayroong magandang urine output. Supposed to be, we have 30 to 50 cc urine output per hour. But, if one hour na mababa or wala pa siyang urine output, nag-exceed na ng one hour, wala pa rin, it indicates that the ADH is activated. Okay? So, antidiuretic hormone. So, if activated yung antidiuretic hormone, it is because yung kidney perceive that there is lacking of fluids into the circulation or fluid volume deficit. But the problem is not the fluid, but the main organ responsible for pumping or delivery ng, ng blood into the tissues and cell ay merong problema. So, what will happen? Yung waste supposed to be na dapat ibalik sa kidney, nagbibuild up dun sa tissues and cells, causing for circulatory overload, causing for the complications which is heart failure. If you're still here in my channel, it means you're learning something. So please continue and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, let's continue. Next is vital sign. It is this is very basic since uh, the main organ in the circulations, the heart is having a problem. Again, kailangan natin i-check yung cardiac rate, respiratory rate, and yung pulse rate. Not only in palpating, but also in auscultating. Uh, I think I will going to discuss this much further on the other slides. Next is capillary refill. Why oxygenation and tissue perfusion? Simple capillary refill is very important. It indicates kasi, di ba, when we check the capillary refill, we need to pinch Kaya nga capillary refill nasa pinaka-edge or distal portion ng body ng isang tao. So, ang purpose nito is to check if yung capillary refill ng isang patients na may MI, nare-reach pa yung peripheral system. So, the normal, how to assess if there's a good or poor capillary refill is to check pag nag tinanggal mo yung pag-pinch mo in split seconds, 2 to 3, dapat nag-flush yung red color. But if there is a delay, it indicates 
pour, capillary refill, ibig sabihin, hindi umaabot sa peripheral system yung cardiac output or yung tissue perfusion. Sufficient tissue perfusion with oxygen and oxygen and nutrients. We need to check also the pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeter is providing us an information on the autosaturation again in the peripheral system. Diba nakaklip siya sa ating finger or dun sa two nail at tinitingnan natin kung ilan na yung autosat na tinatawag natin. Normally, dapat 90 to 100 autosaturation. Below 90, Careful, we need to double check some of the associated manifestation indicating for more hypoxia. Pag bumababa na siya ng 87-85, we need to refer to the attending physician kasi pwede na siyang EET or mag tracheal tube insertion. Ano po? So, it is associated some of the indications and lab tests and also manifestation. So, this is very important. You need to place the patients in semifolders. Why in semifolders? Because the greater diaphragm expansions thereby yung lungs oxygen exchange promoting an adequate cardiac output. And oxygen therapy is very important as prescribed since we know that hypoxia is common and there is an oxygen demand. Letter D in the COPD tab, mnemonics is diet and nutrition. So, it is very important, but napaka-basic naman to. Uh, usually, it's a collaborative management. It would depends on the doctor's order. So, so first 24 or 3 days, 24 hours to 48 hours um, or 72 hours, depende. Pag nasa ICU, pag... Uh, mataas pa yung mga troponin or yung mga enzymes niya, naka-NPO yung patient. Not only the activities, pati yung metabolism niya kasi, the, pag busog yung patient, natural, kailangang i-digest yung uh, or metabolize yung kanyang kinain. So, mag-increase pa rin yung cardiac rate. So, naka-NPO siya. So, once na pig prescribe na or advise na yung diet, so, usually, low salt, low cal caloric, and sodium diet. And um, pag sa recovery period na, uh, small frequent diet is being advised. And avoid yung mga stimulant like yung coffee, like yung chocolate na nagkukuntay ng caffeine kasi it may leads more on vasoconstriction. So, what is letter P? PTCA or PCI, that is percutaneous coronary intervention. So, this is a coronary catheterization, minimal invasive procedure to access yung coronary circulation and yung uh, blood flow chamber ng heart using a catheter. So, it is um, assisted to angiography or anteriography. This is a medical imaging technique used to visualize inside or the lumen of the blood vessels or organs of the body with particular interest sa, sa arteries and veins. Kaya nga, angiography, visualization ng veins, uh, arteriography, visualization of the artery o di ba? Bonggay shoes and yung heart chamber. So, um, guided sa blood, sa blood vessels imaging using x-ray. Pero pag tinawag naman natin angioplasty, we're talking more on balloons. Balloons, angioplasty, and percutaneous transluminal angioplasty. Uh, plasty, that is PTA. That is a minimal invasive endovascular procedure. Uh, used to widen the narrow obstructive arteries or veins. Typically, tinitreat yan yung arterial atherosclerosis. So, anong ginagawa nila? So, uh... Once access yung bloodstream through the femoral or arterial artery kung saan pinapasok yung catheter, the procedure uses yung ca ng catheter to visualize the blood vessels or endoscopic ang tawag nun. On x-ray imaging, uh, yung interventional cardiologist mag-perform sh perform siya ng coronary angioplasty using yung balloon catheter in which yung deflated balloon ina-advance or pinapasok siya sa obstructive arteries at pag na-reach yung uh, area kung saan mayroong obstruction, ini-inflate yung balloon to relieve the narrowing. 
or certain device such as yung stand ka nito tinatawag kasama pag insert can be developed or can be deployed I'm sorry to keep the blood vessels open so maraming uh, various uh, procedure ang ginagawa dito pwede siyang uh, it is being used to drag away yung clot or drag away yung uh, yung plaques or pwedeng iwanan yung stent doon to maintain yung um, blood vessels open. So, patients who undergo this type of Medicaid or this procedure, naka-dual antiplatelet therapy siya or nakadap. Uh, usually, the, one of the drug of choice is aspirin and clopidogrel. Next intervention is coronary artery bypass, also known as cabbage. Um, this is a colloquial heart bypass or uh, bypass surgery to restore normal blood flow to the obstructive coronary artery. Ang normal coronary artery transport blood to the heart muscles itself is not enough to maintain the circulatory system. So, anong gagawin nila? Meron tayo silang tinatawag na lita or lemma, yung left internal thoracic artery, kumuha sila ng uh, arteries, pumutol sila ng ar arteries sa thoracic or yung lemma naman, kumuha sila sa mammary, left internal mammary artery, yung artery ang kinuha nila sa may mammary, tapos gumawa sila ng kumbaga sa transportation. Uh, pag nagbabiyahe ka para hindi ka na mapalayo, hindi ka dadaan sa main road, kundi dadaan ka sa diversion. It's the same as with coronary artery bypass crop or cabbage. So, um, yung uh, one end is attached to the aorta or one of its major branches, and the other end is attached to the obstructive artery uh, immediately after the obstructions to restore yung blood flow. So, we're going to discuss more on these um, cabbages in other video. Letter A is analgesic antihypertensive and other medication. I made a uh, mnemonic that is made sand. So, let's start with S, statin. Statin is a class of lipids lowering medications that reduce illness and mortality in those who are at risk of cardiovascular disease. They are the most common cholesterol-lowering drugs, and the therapy has shown to reduce mortality and lower yung LDL cholesterol or yung tinatawag natin na bad cholesterol. Usually, after magpa-laboratory or blood works, and yung result is elevated yung cholesterol in yung lipids, yung triglycerides is elevated, so yung doctor nag nagpiprescribe siya ng statin. Sample ng statin is simvastatin or atorvastatin. So, it is being prescribed for 1 month to 2 months na mag-take ng medication. Aldosterone antagonist may be used if there is an evidence ng left ventricular dysfunctions or arrhythmias ang patient after ng MI. So, ideally, after the beginning ng treatment ng ACE inhibitor, binibigay na rin yung aldosterone antagonist. Next is nitroglycerin. Ang nitroglycerin is the drug of choice for angina pectoris. But it also given sa MI kasi it is a vasodilator and it can be given sublingually or through IV. And ang cost niya kasi nagkukos siya or nag-improve siya ng blood supply sa heart. Next is a diuretic drugs. There are a lot of types ng diuretic. Uh, itong aldosterone antagonist is also an antagonist or a diuretics. It is a group of drugs. It's often used in adjunctive therapy in combinations with other drugs for the management ng chronic heart failure. Kasi yung complication ng MI is heart failure. So, nagko-congest yung patient pag in mo yung lungs, makikit, maririnig mo na mayroong uh, crackles and sometimes meron na siyang pedal edema. So, they prescribe this water pill medication. Metropolol is, we call this as lol, not, not as laughing out loud, but it is a B1 receptor blocker medication. It is used to treat yung high blood pressure and chest pain due to poor blood flow to the heart and other 
conditions that involving an abnormal fast heart rate. So, binibigay din ito sa mga patients na mayroong arrhythmias. It can be prescribed or given to intravenously or orally. Sometimes, twice a day, pero pag nag, may, may, nasa maintenance na lang or recovery period, once a day. Uh, usually, there is also another preparations for this in a single tablet together with hydrocore thiazides which is in the form of diuretic. Morphine is an opioid medication and it's very important as part of therapy for pain relief effect. It is given together with other opioid medication. Purpose is to relieve chest pain. And angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor or we call this as ACE inhibitor are a class of medication that used primarily for the treatment of high blood pressure and heart failure. They work by causing relaxation ng blood vessel as well as decrease yung blood volume which leads to lower yung blood pressure. Ito kasing angiotensin converting enzymes. Uh, I discussed this already in my previous video yung sa hypertension. Yung angiotensin, kinoconvert niya yung angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which is a vasoconstrictor, kaya tumataas yung BP. But since it is an ACE inhibitor, piniprevent niya ang conversion ng 1 to 2 ng angiotensin at mas sinisecrete niya yung bradekinin because bradekinin is peptide vasodilator. B or beta blockers are class of medications that are predominantly used to manage yung mga abnormal heart rhythm or arrhythmias and protect the heart from second heart attack. From the first heart attack, ang tawag nito naman is secondary prevention. Ang primary prevention, iniiwasan mo magkaroon ka ng heart attack by observing yung exercise, good diet, and lifestyle. Pag secondary prevention na, taking some medication, modifying of healthy lifestyle, um, and also yung uh, observe ng uh, good diet. So, secondary na yun, piniprevent na lang siya na magkaroon uli ng um, myocardial infarction. Beta blockers are competitive antagonists that blocks the receptor sites. At meron tong tatlong klase ng beta receptor. Yung B1, B2, and BT, B3 adrenergic receptors. Yung B1 adrenergic receptors are located mainly in the heart and in the kidney. Pag B2 adrenergic receptors are located mainly in the lungs, gastrointestinal tract, liver, sa uterus, smooth muscles, and skeletal muscles. At yung B3 is uh, located in the fat cells. So, yung beta blockers interfere with the binding to the receptor of epinephrine and other stress hormones and weaken the effect of stress hormones. Alam natin pag may under stress, nagkukosya ng vasoconstriction, nag-i-increase yung cardiac rate, nag-i-increase yung BP, leading for uh, a pathologic complication. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I'm your nurse on duty. Until next time.